Hello everybody and welcome to another Ascension Messages. My name is Bobby Richardson. Today is going to be a special event because I've just released my latest video uh, for the Stepping Through a Portal series that I've started creating. It's my third uh, video and this portal that we're going, that we go through is into the Pleiades. Um, the reason why this is a special event is because of the connection that I had through this whole uh, last just it was like I, I think it was only just before three weeks that I'd finished this whole huge um, video uh, and I cannot believe the surmountable of work that I did the um, connection that I had with them was so beautiful and so in line and it was like wading through the mud with ease and I, I can only explain it in that way because I knew with my logical mind it was a lot of work uh, but it just easily happened because they were with me the whole way, intuitively guiding me to the pictures that I needed to use to create the imagery. They were giving me the blissful feelings as motivation, uh, being with me all the time. And, um, and my acknowledgement of that, my allowance of that allowed it to happen as well. So it started straight after I had put up the last, the second um, Stepping Through a Portal video, which was to do with future. And as soon as I had put that up, it was almost like they just integrated with me. It was very quick. This was three weeks ago. I was driving in the car and I just got the most incredible blissful feeling, which I have had before because they've taken me to Pallades uh, within my mind and and other times as well and dreams and all sorts of things that has happened to me um, and when I had that experience in the car it was like they uploaded downloaded all of these visuals like visuals of their world and I also got wisdom and information about how they use the crystals on their world and how they program them, how they recorded information and so forth. So each picture that they that I created for this video, it was them, it was us aligning together and then uh, them you know, I, as I would skim through all of the imagery that I could use uh, for free on the internet, um, they would say this one, this one, this one, and I just get this pull, or this feeling, this knowing that that's what I need. Even if in a logical sense, I'm going, no, I should be looking for this, they, they pull me through to what I really need. And I trusted that instinct, that, that guidance that's coming through. I do tend to do that in my life anyway. Um, that's how I move through life anyway, but this was very profound with the blissful feeling as well, the actual feeling of being at home. I literally felt like I was at home while I was creating um, this video. And it's not to say that Pallades is the only home that I've resided on. I can, uh, I know that I've also resided in uh, other different uh, planets um, different star systems and all sorts of things. So that's why um, I can do such a varied uh, portal experience because I have I have memory of different um, realities before I was born through the feelings that I get. And I can also channel uh, collectively with the uh, that vibration and pull and the information. Uh, then I use that wisdom to integrate it into my logical mind. And uh, because I haven't had that much schooling as such, I can put it in simplified manner and a simplified manner to be able to be understood by 
uh, most people uh, in some ways, um, unless you really have no, no idea what spirituality is at all. And then you probably wouldn't watch these videos <laughs> anyway. Um, so today is the day that we're going to go through each image, um, each picture. And we're also going to go through uh, any sort of stories that I've come up with um, in my journey with the Palladians, because I have been contacted by the Palladians. Um, and that did start when I was young, when I was 11 years old, in 1978, uh, there was a really big recording on the news that there was a UFO in Kaikoura that a cameraman had taken photographs of and it went all over New Zealand that this had happened and exactly the same time around that exact same time as this was all happening honestly I think it was just before but I couldn't honestly pinpoint exactly whether it was just before or just after but I think it was just before um I went to bed one night and I looked out the window and I saw an orange ball of light outside my window. And to me, I just went, oh, it's a traffic light. That's unusual. I can't remember lying in my bed and being able to see at that angle a traffic light, like a, um, a highway traffic light. Uh, and it just stayed there for ages and I, I like went, oh, yeah, it must be a traffic light. It's not moving or anything like that. I looked up out of the window and I saw the highway in the distance and it was way lower and the traffic lights, like the little lights that shine up as you go onto the motorway, um, weren't that you know, they were smaller and they weren't that big and, uh, and then I realised this was not a traffic light <laughs> so I'm like lying there watching this thing and I had this really strong feeling that they found me or they were looking they were watching me and I in my mind was thinking well who am I to for you to be watching me I'm just a little girl you know I'm just a normal you know, with all my issues and problems and fears and I couldn't understand why they would be sending me sort of a, a feeling of we found you. Um, and then I saw this ball of light just shoot off really fast, like really fast. It went to the left of my vision of my window and I froze. I was so so scared um I didn't move an inch I didn't want to move one muscle out of fear and I stayed like that which felt like it felt like an hour it felt like a long time for a child to stay like that the next thing that happened was my father entered my room and he sat on the end of my bed and he held my hand he made me feel better. I can't remember him speaking anything. I think I wanted to tell him, but I didn't, that I saw a UFO. I was just too afraid of everything at that moment. And then he, he stood up and he left. And um, honestly, my father would never enter my room. Um, there's a there's a family reason why that would never happen. My fam my father would has never entered my room before or after. And I asked him the next day. I wasn't actually asked him a few weeks later, and he said that he never went in my room. Um, this is like eleven o'clock at night as well. So it, he never went in my room. So that was really confusing for me. I had also had experiences of being found on the roof of our house, uh, although you can climb out, could climb out the window to go on the roof of the house. Um, I was running, it was a very steep roof though, don't know how I started running backwards. I, apparently my mum came home from her work, which she worked night shifts and she was, it was three in the morning when she drove up the driveway. Here I am on the roof of the house, running backwards with my hands in the air, like holding my hands up. 
and it was on a steep roof. As she said, come inside. She realized she thought I was sleepwalking. I can't remember any of this. I got into big trouble the next day for that too. I didn't understand what was going on. So there's been these like incidences. I remember seeing lights in my room. There's incidences when I was a kid. Um, now, fast forwarding that to when I'm older and an adult and all of the things that has happened to me since I realized now that that was a Palladian ship and that was a Palladian what probably someone that see as like a fatherly figure that came into my room and he was disguised as that but when I look back on that time now I don't see my dad walking in my room I see a man with uh grayer hair where my dad had brown hair um any case that was really interesting so I'm gonna go through each one of these uh pictures these images and I will explain what I saw, uh, what I felt, what I saw in my head and the messages that come through, any more messages that they want to bring through. Plus, if they want to, um, if it comes up to talking about some other uh, times in my life when I actually did have communication with the Palladians, which I did um, throughout my life, I will let you know about those as well. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first image that I created. Um, what happened with this image was I was just, I was actually showing a, from them, a kind of a, um, a rock face cave platform um, and water. And so I found this amazing, what I, it kind of comes across to me like a turtle and I know Gaia is represented by a turtle. Now, this rock is actually on Gaia herself, obviously, because I'm not taking photographs of Pallades, right? Um, and these are all free, free images that I could use and manipulate if I wanted to. Um, so all copyright free in that respect, just to let you know, because I don't, but the various artists come from pixels and uh Pixel art and pixels. Uh, and there's one other as well, cloud something. Uh, any case, I can put those links down below if you really want to find the pictures or the images. Um, so this is a what I would see as a rock as a turtle. And so when I was creating this image, what happens is I just get this sense of other eyes. Oh, I can see people seeing through those eyes. Oh, they, okay, they're like a platform. And I, that's how it works in my head. Um, I'll put a big crystal here. Oh, that crystal has to go there. I can feel it. And, um, and then I started putting imagery of a face. I'm like, oh, my God, that's Gaia. And it's, it's kind of like this interaction between them and, and me um, working together, you know, I needed a spirit ball here. And like, in other words, the Palladians can come as uh, energy balls, the higher frequency Palladians, um, or they could be in human form that is in the uh, observational lounge over here, looking through the eye of this rock. And they can telepathically talk with uh, Gaia. She can speak in this water. So she would be able to open her eyes and speak with her mouth. And, and, um, and whether it be a telepathic uh, vibrational meet there or actual words, I couldn't say, honestly. I'm just going to go with the fact that I couldn't say. Maybe it's because... Um, she could do either or depending on who she's linking up with um, but they would keep in tabs of they were keeping tabs as a kind of a guardian it's kind of like a palladian maya especially and earth gaia have portals that go in in between um that were linked through uh, like a friendship like a planetary friendship between those planets and then uh, the Palladians are like the, the neuron parts of the planet and then they, they can interact with them and gather more information from how Gaia is doing. And, she, and it wasn't as much that she did talk with the Palladians through this, this time that we've just gone through because she was in a lockdown 
um, as well. But there was moments where they could keep an eye on her and, um, you know, just help her if, if guided by their own sense to talk with, see where it was all going, what the energy was, you know, how it's all shifting, that sort of thing. But they couldn't, like, go to Gaia and change anything because it was like Gaia and humanity were going through a, a big lesson, kind of like um, if someone was, you know, put in a room for time out. <laughs> the only way I can describe it. And then um, the mum could still see over the counter and make sure, you know, still sees from, from another place and make sure. And then if the kid was really being silly, the mum would say, hey, 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 you know, no, you know, you're not allowed to absolutely wreck your room while you're in there or you're not allowed to, you know, we're, we're still here. Um, and I'm still here and I'm you know even though you're going through all of that sort of that kind of feeling but um, from a much more mature level because <laughs> we're talking planetary alignments here and uh, communication so it's a much more mature level I'm trying to bring it into a terminology that you guys could understand but definitely um in the Atlantis Lemuria age, this was this was a connection that happened all the time. And um, it was always, you know, the Gaia would speak through the lake and, and they could feel the vibration and the connection to Gaia, you know, tell her that they're coming, have a, you know, can we come, invitations, all that sort of stuff. Uh, communication on the next level of awareness what's going up what's going wrong what's that sort of stuff um, meetings that were held uh, all sorts of things that happen in Atlantis Lemuria from an observational point here okay and this one when I was creating it I knew that the ship was entering through a vortex a hull and it was kind of breaking up the matrix as it went through because it was shifting from one vibration to a next although it wasn't breaking it up it was just kind of like morphing through it and that was what came out with the imagery here um, it was more of the ship was morphing from one uh, vibration to another vibration and uh, obviously over the in Pleiades and um, especially the Maya um, together is a little bit more uh, stronger colors but Maya is definitely those softer colors uh, very illuminated the beings almost look like they're shining the light um, out of them and uh, like the beings will always know like Pleiadians and the Maya Maya beings will always know um, major. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just, um, I'm not very good with names, so, but this name major came through, whether they are called Majans or May, Major, Maya. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so uh, they would, they always had the softer pastelier colors and uh, that's what happened there. So I, yeah, I just went with the feelings and the gut feelings with that one. This was one of the first images that came in my mind where they said that the crystal could hold vibration for that location. And you can, if, if acknowledged through the crystal, the, you could take that, like take that crystal, unearth it, put it in another area, and they had an, a way of being able to communicate with the crystal and allow the crystal to um, be programmed with that location. And there was something that they did that would allow the crystal to uh, holographically project that location somewhere else so that the location the actual location of the planet wasn't disturbed and yet they could still um, you know still have uh, other beings coming from other planets that could interact with parts of their planet and it like left less of a footprint on there uh, so also the crystals around the city I have been shown in um, 
other uh, times where there was big crystal surrounding cities. It wasn't really like this. There was less crystals. I just think that this is beautiful, though. Um, I just kept going with the crystals around this because it felt divine. <laughs> but I saw like one, like a circle of them or a shape around the outside perimeter and it would be sporadic huge crystals that would be there. They would hold a vibration uh, in integration with the beings that were inside that city that was of protection so that if anything of lesser vibration was trying to enter, uh, they everyone knew and um, and they they had a protection of just that. Everyone knew what was what was trying to be infiltrated. So there would always be one step ahead of anything that was starting to to shift. And they would uh, um, be able to hold the vibration enough for those beings not to be able to enter or be able to even see um, the entrance. So that, uh, and all of this information, because it's uh, connected to the waters, uh, is um, the water held the information as well. So the water was, would run around with the crystals that were planted um, and that would carry the messages through or hold the vibration that was needed as well. Yeah, so some of this information that I'm giving you now is actually um, channeled through as well. So I'm getting extra information as I go, and I'm just allowing it to come forward. Uh, this is a specific holographic uh, projection, and that's why I made the, the sky look a little patterny here so that we had that feeling of this isn't uh, real nature except for the fact that the water is still water um, and then this holographic projection that was kind of placed over top uh, so the the dolphins could come up and you could still interact with them it was a, it's a very serene serene place to be in uh, these crystals represented the uh, energy held by the crystals to connect to project this holographic image here. At solid form, you can use um, the different uh, modalities. If there was a you know, bent, uh, chair or anything where they sit on it, you don't put your hands through anything. Um, although if these crystals were uprooted and put somewhere else in that holographic uh, image would be would be gone it would be disappeared so it's not held there as a solid structure and to, um, unless these crystals are here because they're the ones that have the recorded information in them um, and yeah so many beings will come and use these places to to uh, holiday and so forth and um, only with the right vibration or meat. So you couldn't go there unless you had that frequency, you, you held that frequency of um, ba balance within yourself. This is uh, obviously the imagery that I have on my YouTube and I'm using it as my actual images now for my website as well. So like, um, this was gifted to me as I was waking up uh, before the Palladian interaction happened, before I was going to do stepping for a portal. Maybe it was um, igniting me into this, uh, but it was very vivid in my mind. I didn't, I, I, I didn't go there. I just, it was like this vivid flash of a a pin, uh, image in my mind like a projection in my mind and it was very real um and it was uh the pillars were more a lighter color though um than this and it was it was a serene feeling um very serene so i wanted to I wanted to bring this one into the uh, mix because I know it was gifted to me by the Palladians, but this at that time was a vision of our future, what we could project, what we could create on God, with Gaia on earth and um, living in the beauty and abundance for all, uh, that sort of feeling. 
So this is a Palladium male. I actually had a different image that I really liked even more so than this, but it was somebody else's artwork and I'm not going to do that. So this is uh, the Palladium male that I had. They don't have beards. They don't have, um, they didn't, well, these ones didn't have, beards they do they can um they can project an image of whatever they want but many of them are, are uh like don't have to shave so there's like depending on what planet you come from you have to remember Pleiades isn't just a um like Gaia and one sun you know it's Pleiades is many suns many many stars and many planets around those stars uh, so there's many different types of Palladians. It's not as, you know, we always like to use our logic and compartmentalise everything and say it's just that. Um, and if you don't look like that, then you're not part of that sort of thing. And it's not, it's not like that at all. Um, there's a lot more variety than what, what you think. Uh, these, this male, I remember feeling into this male and he had no, couldn't have any beard. Um, but he, long white platinum blonde hair as well, uh, straight hair as well, uh, very vivid blue eyes. Uh, it does remind me of an encounter that I had uh, in 2011. I will bring that up with another image as well. This is uh, when they were telling me about this place, I, they kept showing this image to me of, um, this is on Gaia herself, um, these salt lakes um, that they were showing me, it, not as salt on, it was more of a vibrational pull what they wanted me to use this image as the vibrational pulls that they have over uh in their on their planets around surrounding the stars of Maya and Tegeta. Um, so what happens is each of these pulls would hold a certain vibration and it would be in alignment like it was recorded information that was held sacred specifically for seeing into things seeing into things or like in other words psychic seeing uh, or into healing um, for oneself to align my oneself with certain vibrations um, to uh, send out vibrations out to other planets uh, there's uh, to help heal uh, animals to help uplift certain locations and connect with their planet um, so that the vibrational pulls were sacred um, and you when you felt a pull when a palladium feels a pull to go to those vibrational pulls they will lie in them and feel into that uh, healing modality or the vibration that they're sending out to the planet to other beings, um, to get ideas too. Uh, there were certain ones for inventive ideas when they wanted to uh, uh, utilize more of their imagination and how to how to solidify it into grounding it. Um, so yeah, these vibrational pulls were specifically for uh, sh shifting consciousnesses and, and healings and that sort of thing um yeah and there was no uh no no need to have someone in charge of things everyone was in charge of their own authentic self because the uh everyone was interlinked anyway so if you if you weren't trusting someone you weren't trusting part of who you were to as well and there was then you would need to go get a healing done anyway and um everyone took responsibility for their own self so when i was 
creating this image, this image was very similar to the one that I saw in my mind when I was driving, but it was a crystal side and, and it could um, create a location somewhere else. But this is of their real planet. And uh, the water was a lot bluer though. Um, yeah, interesting enough, when I was trying to do this image, I was trying to get the water bluer, but it was already a, um, a darker color. And and they said to me, that's okay, just, just put the white, you know, make the white shine out lighter so you can see it's like glowing and it's enough. Uh, but I've kind of brought out the blue and the water for here anyway. Uh, the hair on her head is picking up a lot of the vibration um, from the water as well as her skin. And she would get a sensory download from the water. Uh, the, I think it's the Indians uh, like Cherokee and Hopis and they used to keep their hair long because they could feel vibrations through the wind, through their hair um, and the same within the water. Uh, so it connected them to, to energy um, and feeling through the vibration through their hair onto their skull and then connecting to the pineal gland and then the downloads would happen. This is something that I created because I had an interaction. It was actually with a male um, Palladian. He, it started off with him dancing with me in a dream and it felt like one of those really real dreams. But then what happened next was he put his forehead on my forehead in the dream and he started to chant and he chanted starting with Ra, all these syllables through my body and then he would turn his head and speak in his his language of sounded very like between Egyptian and um, Fey language Celtic very that sort of if you could imagine those two together. <laughs> uh, and then he would turn his head and then he did this five times to me. And as, you know, like about the third time, I'm, I am waking up. And as I'm waking up, I'm realizing my whole body was vibrating through this whole event. Like it was really happening. So what happens is they'll come into your dreams um, and your mind well, they probably come physically, they come to you energetically, like in another vibration, probably in a higher vibration. This Palladian came and maybe floated over top of me while I was sleeping, put his forehead on my forehead. And here I am, you know, feeling like in my dream that I'm dancing with this Palladian because my brain's trying to make sense out of what's literally happening in a higher frequency here. And, uh, and then when he put his forehead on my forehead, he really did. Um, and then he starts chanting. I woke up from that and I realized that he was my pupil. And, and like I taught him a lot in uh, a previous life in Pleiades. And uh, I said to him, when I come here as a human, um, could you please you know, uh, uplift my frequency when I get to a certain point. So I had to already get myself into a certain vibration. Then he would come and help me by doing what he just did, vibrationally clearing me. And then I knew that, oh my God, I'd reached that point where I, it's only up from here. I can only go up from here. Although I have had a lot of hoo-ha relationships since and stuff, but I'm slowly up in the, in the respect of finding who I am um, and remembering who I am as a soul, as my soul journey, as well as who I am in this physical form. And so they, in their world, will... Um, greet each other by forehead to forehead and you can see that through the Maoris in New Zealand where they put their forehead on each other and uh, just and feel into each other they, they were taught that by the Palladians when the Palladians came here long ago um, in the Atlantis Lemuria age and, and just after the Maoris knew to put their forehead on the forehead of each other and keep that going
So they also, uh, in their worlds, they live under the oceans and above the oceans because the water is a big deal to them and they can, uh, they have different communities that are more conducive to the water. You know, maybe you might call them um, more of a mermaidy kind of a scenario um, as well. Uh, they they and they also have like these domes of cities um and you don't have to be like a half fish or anything to live in those domes you can walk around and stuff like that um all held by crystals as well uh it has a different atmosphere a different vibrational feeling when you're surrounded with water like that so a lot of the palladians like to live in, in the oceans as well as on top of the oceans. I actually drew this, I actually created this, don't worry about that website, that website is not avoid now. Um, it's now codes to a new reality.com. Um, this was created a while ago when I was writing a book called uh, UFO Girl, which I've only ever, I got halfway through and then I stopped because <laughs> um, everything kind of shifted in my reality and, and it just moved, I moved out away from creating the book. So I created this then and this, they told me, was more to do with uh, galactic uh, federation kind of ship where there was all geometrical patterns on the walls. There was some color as well. Maybe this is a bit brighter than, than the actual imagery on the actual walls of the teleportations and the um, pods and the um, or streams in the, in the galactic ship. Uh, so yeah, they, they can use those devices and created devices to morph down these are codes that are written on the on the tubes themselves as well um as far as i know like they would morph in pretty much like uh star trek Okay, sorry, I'm just getting a download from them. They're like saying there's all these different types of where sometimes there'd be tubes and ships and then the tubes would lift and then, and you know, they would, they would be in the tubes when they manifested. So they always manifested inside those tubes and it kept it very neat. Um, or it could be that there was just like a platform, just like on Star Trek where you didn't need the tubes or anything. It just depended on who created the... Um, the devices but the geometrical patterns on the walls had something to do with it as well yeah it's really interesting anyway the imagery that I'm getting from that remember what I'm telling you is only one like one part of all of this what I'm telling you is only one part. There's so many different diverse um, ways of living. And it's because those beings in the high frequency, if they've wanted to create something, so long as it's in alignment for the benefit of everyone, it would be created. Um, where we have, that is the only rule that they had is, is it an alignment for the benefit of everyone, you know, or even for that one person and it's not hurting anybody else, then it's an alignment for the benefit of everyone, you know. But we have these, uh, humanity has this structure of hierarchy involved where you have to sign all these you know, legislations and go through people uh, that are already holding on to their own control mechanism and coming from their lack and, and yeah, I'll say yes to this and I'll say no to that and I've got, I've got control, I can say whatever um, or, you know, that happened to me in the past. Um, someone uh, who, who built a building that was close, too close to the river, 
that foul. So we're never going to do that ever, ever, ever again and get locked into a limitation where, you know, someone might come up with a new kind of metal that could suffice, could actually work with that um, being by that river and this person who's the council member would just go straight up no you know that sort of thing's always coming from a lack of there's no feeling into anything um, of yes this feels right uh, so I'm allowing you because you're in the right vibration with the pattern of of the river and that that river wants you to be there and it's just a known fact there's no having to write anything there's no legislation kind of you know red tape all the time it's just a known fact that uh everyone being telepathic and having that that uh connection with the planet knows that that device can be built there because it's it if it if you went to build it there then um and the planet didn't like it then it would crumble anyway it wouldn't even be able to go come into fruition um but humanity kind of forces everything to happen you know we plant things all in a row and you'll watch that in um the natural state of things uh plants in a row there's always a dip where energy is not working for about four or five plants and then it will come back up again um and obviously that is a dip where no nothing should be planted there that's not where you plant that plant but you we're not integrated enough and telepathic enough to be able to know those things that we can actually feel into where the plant's supposed to grow or not anyway getting back to this um this here this is uh the first uh picture i did of an image that i would had from communication from higher frequency light beings um and that story goes that they went to um they actually came to me in another dream but Pleiadians tend to like to come in dreams because it just uh is a good way of a and um initiation to be able to connect with you so in this dream though they landed very similar to the next picture that i'll pull up um, they looked like this blue being they looked very similar actually he was a lot they were a lot taller and lankier and they had energy coming off them but they were very vivid blue they looked very similar to the beings that are in the knowing um, with Nicolas Cage, that movie, but they were vivid, vivid, vivid blue. Um, I'll pull out the other one because this is more like the actual, let's see if we can get that closer. So what I saw in this dream was this UFO came and landed on the top of these hills and then um, four beings came out of the craft and they were very vivid blue and they were see-throughy and then I'm like oh my god I'm so excited they're here um in my dream I ran, ran in to get a camera like I typically do <laughs> um and then when I came out they had come down to the street that I was on and they morphed into this rainbow sphere a rainbow ball and then it whirled around me and then lied down beside me and morphed into a, a male being. And he actually had dark hair. Um, and he was talking to me telepathically. And he said, uh, when the governments fall, um, the seers will be ignited. Um, and I think that was that's part of my journey. Um, and then he started to tell me some numbers 28 29th uh and that was the actual day 28 29th was the actual day in 2020 on um in march that night was the night that i had an incredible experience of meeting oneness um and becoming one with all and uh yeah so they i wanted to bring the, that image in the crazy event happened though that that day that I met oneness led me on a upward scale of acknowledging where I wasn't supporting myself 
which then broke down the narcissistic relationship that I had formed, that I had got myself into. Um, and I love that I love the guy heaps, but yeah, I was giving a lot of my energy to trying to help him see himself and he wasn't able to see himself. So I got locked into this narcissistical victim kind of relationship. Although I didn't feel like a victim at the time, but looking at it, I was keep on um, because I had many reserves of my own energy pouring through me from my heart and my soul I just kept pouring energy through to him but it was depleting after a while so I ended up that ended up completely breaking up after that so it was like that 28th 29th of March 220 was the instigator of my own journey to becoming who I am now and uh and and self-supporting who I am now so uh the crazy thing that happened was it was about seven months later we broke up and um then I ended up in this unit I landed in a, a lovely unit uh I looked you know threw the blinds onto the veranda, walked out onto the veranda, and here's the street that I saw these beings come at in my dream years previously, these four beings. And I was like, oh, my God, that's the street that I saw these beings. That is so incredible that, yeah, it's like part of your dreams coming true. It's really weird. Um, so that's why I had to bring them in. Okay, this one, this image is of, this is how I really saw like the crystals would be like sporadically around the uh, everywhere. And there was like tunnels of crystals as well. So this, this um, here is like a, where a boat could go into a tunnel and stuff like that. Um, we have different types of humanoids, some that could levitate and, and move through life, you know, floating around, sort of fly. I think that's why we have these flying dreams as well, where a flying dream to me means that you can come um, get over the uh, hurdles that you have and raise into a higher vibration. Well, the more we raise into higher vibration, the more we can manipulate um, the material world around us as well. Well, in, in respect of our own bodies being able to be so-called lighter than air and and uh you know more through there's there's it's not like you are you're human and you feel human and you don't put your hand through your hand kind of thing it's not like you become a ghost but uh you you your molecular structure shifts into different vibrations for you to be able to do these so-called levitational tricks, I suppose you would call them tricks in this planet. Um, in that planet, in uh, Pleiades, it's, that's how it is. Um, and so some of them would be these light balls would be beings as well. Um, and then you have ones that are more suited to grounding and the physical reality, and they are more likely to build the ships um, and that sort of thing because they have a very grounded nature of being able to build um, and create physically. But there's so many different diverse feelings and, and um, ways of living. It's not just humanity doesn't have to just be stuck in in this limited 3d consciousness of only you know five senses we have way more than five senses and when we start to develop that we will find out a lot more about ourselves so the children over there are um a lot more freer to be to express who they are to be who they are they all really come with a sense of knowing and we all do even as humans we do but we are it's shunned like you you could have a daughter that would you know naturally talk to plants or naturally uh, be able to see into different frequencies or naturally um, have the ability to imagine and create uh, within their mind something 
that's not on this planet and yet we tend to shut them down because they don't have the language skill or that still got to integrate um, their actual physical form and how to use their bodies on on earth and stuff where Palladians are born with uh, much more freedom obviously um, it's more they chase the vibrational feelings of life and uh, connecting like say for instance to the flower and the butterfly becoming that um, and feeling into it and what that feels like to feel like feel into what a butterfly actually feels and what a flower feels and that sort of thing what a tree feels um so and it all depends on the actual child uh the gifts of the child are um enhanced uh, nothing is being boxed into you have to be specific uh go to a specific uh, classroom and learn exactly that like uh, if you if a child didn't want to learn about maths because their whole journey was more to do with integrating with creativity then absolutely they don't need to <laughs> learn about maths or anything like that um, we're we're in, on hum uh, on earth at the moment we've been integrated into a system that's just been um controlled by uh, just a few and those few uh coming from only their logical mind of the only way we can control them is to make sure that they go in a specific uh educational system and uh make sure that they uh don't get too uh creative and imaginative and intuitive um, all of that has been poo-pooed in our reality because that would mean that we're stepping out of their, their game and we're starting to carve our own path into something completely new. So the children are uh, freer to be able to explore and they can leave their homes and, you know, go and wander through the field, fields and they have... Um, telepathic communication all the time um, there's abilities to be able to teleport if ne necessary anyway uh, so that and there also there's a trust um, between the child and the and the parent if the parent didn't have a trust then the child wouldn't trust itself and then the child would end up feeling that and that happens with humans um we we don't trust our own children and so our children don't trust themselves and so we grow up with that feeling of lack and not feeling like we can be trusted in this reality unless someone tells us what to do uh where they don't have that over there okay so this is a building um that I keep seeing in the imageries of what they keep showing me of Pallades. They don't usually have the rails and all of that sort of stuff up. They really usually have the sea meeting, the actual floor here. But I mean, every now and then they might have the rails and it's very Romanish, isn't it? Uh, but I think that's Romans actually uh, followed through with the Palladian uh, energy of what they created with their holographic projections when they did come to earth and Gaia and Atlantis and the Maria they stones are made of sandstone limestone that sort of thing there was marble as well uh conductive in it conductive materials I think it is I'm not really sure I'm not a scientist or anything like that these are obviously a spirit balls of beings as well. You can converse with those. You can have a, a good old chat with these spirit balls. <laughs> um, the plants there are different too. I created this one a while back as well. This one is a UFO landing on Earth on Gaia herself. Um, and this was actually part of my UFO story, that a UFO girl story that I was creating. Um, where it's kind of like the Galactic Federation ship would be hovering way above. They would bring a pod or a silver a disc pod um, and then uh, they would land and these spirit balls are like scouts of energy, just making sure that everything's kosher before they come down. And, uh, and then they would morph back into the ship and they could solidify as... Uh, different beings inside the ship so yeah 
Now, when I was doing this image, um, the forests are very, uh, very vivid. And um, there's all sorts of different flying beings and things that you wouldn't find on Earth or Gaia. But they also were telling me that they um, left, like the uh, the dolphins come from here, uh, from Pleiades, sorry. <laughs> the dolphins come from Pleiades. Uh, the stingray come from Pleiades. Uh, that's why they're called the angel fish. Uh, and also they kept bringing up the stork for some reason. Um, storks come from Pleiades and they said this little story with it. So I'll tell you the story. They said that the legends on Gaia, how a stork will bring you a baby, was because they used to... Um, they did a kind of a, a breeding program with the Lyrans at one stage. They were uh, infusing their DNA with the humanoid DNA and they would uh, create hybrid, which ended up becoming the human that we are now, um, hybridizing. There was other beings involved as well and there was a, it wasn't just them. Um, and whenever they left a a baby uh, for someone to look after they also left a stork to protect or the stork was like a gift or the stork came with the baby that was integrated into and so that and that became a kind of a legend of the stork will bring the baby um, I don't know I'm just telling you what I was given anyway that's what information um, I was given I know that storks do live on the houses of people with their big nests um, we don't have them in Australia or New Zealand but they have big nests that go on the house on the homes and maybe um, they just have a natural urge to be around pregnant people <laughs> or I don't know but maybe it's all integrated they used to do the hybridizing, bring the stork in. The stork has this energy of always being there when the baby's born. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, like sometimes my logical mind will snap in and go, mm, is this for real? Like I make sure, I want to make sure. And I haven't, um, this is one of those stories where I was told it, but I haven't looked into it enough to say with absolute conviction that this is. But I'll tell. But telling you the story, you know, you can make up your own mind how you feel about that one. If I know a hundred percent, I say a hundred percent with conviction. But they do have a lot of different species on their planet as well, and they left some a lot on Gaia because Gaia has a well, Earth, Mother Earth has a very vast. Um, I, she can handle a lot more um, diversity and so all sorts of different planets could drop their beings off here and it would be like a library of of animals and uh, it, years ago in the Atlantis age and stuff the in the Mary age, the human humans were guardians. Yeah, but that's all kind of changed. Yeah, and I think that's why humans do have a natural uh, protection over the animals because we were guardians of all these different species. So they they integrated um, them into onto Earth. And there were certain stones that were erected around Gaia as well that held the vibration of those animals too to help them integrate. Um, and they, Quebec, I don't know, Quebec's coming up a name. I'm not sure. I'm just saying what this putting in my head. Stones of Quebec, Quebec or something like that. Um, and they would have like hieroglyph hieroglyphs of animals and uh, that was holding vibration for those animals to reside here until they integrated um, and had their own held their own energy while on Gaia 
uh, also the vibrations of the dolphins and the whales um, hold uh, help help hold certain higher frequencies on on earth as well uh, there's literally higher frequencies still in the oceans of Gaia um, we're, we're still going to learn all of this there's just so much more to to learn so yeah this little fella came into they showed me this fella on a it was it was just didn't have eyes or anything it was just this weird kind of a art piece that someone had drawn up and it was free art and they said that's grab that that's similar to some of the beings that we integrate with and we just have to put some eyes on him so I put some eyes on him no mouth no no mouth you know they're telepathy um and they had like kind of like longer tentacle wasn't like an octopus it was like a being but it had had more arms kind of thing that came out and um, they would be able to morph into the seas and swim through the seas as well as be out of the seas and talk to you telepathically and stuff. There's all sorts of different beings, different plants. The plants over there would glow too. There was a lot more glow on the, on the plants uh, as well. And the sunsets, beautiful. Like they, sh they shifted and changed just like on Gaia as well. I think that's why... Uh, Palladians love being on Gaia too because they have beautiful sunsets and the, the water shifts and changes depending on the light and so forth as well. Yeah, so there are actual, um, there's no hierarchy, but there are like a group of, of high, highly benevolent hum, humanoid beings that would uh most of their life they're quite happy to lie um almost in pods or next to each other's heads i know the heads were to next near, near each other and they were like in a either in a circle or a connection there was a connection between their minds and um they had the ability to know predict find find things and they were the seers um on Pleiades and so they kept kept covenant over the vibration making sure that everything was conducent to the living arrangements for everybody's benefit um where on you know on earth we just we're, we're kind of in a locked we're locked down um through only the physical being met and not the energy and the feelings being met by for for the humanoids here uh for humanity so that's something that they would love to see changed um on Gaia instead of having the hierarchy that we have of the governmental system we uh, to appoint those that were highly uh, high um, psychically in tuned um, to hold vibration and oversee and uh, and be as one with each other and then um, have the wisdom to be able to be the seers for others to come and uh gather information when they needed it and that sort of thing because there's all different varieties of like some people just like with with humans some people are good at one thing and some people are good at another and uh there was no you're better than me because you're good at that it was just that that's what you were and so some people were really good at doing the physical work of creating the actual external ships and stuff like that the galactic ships and everything some people were really good at at tuning in with the plants and the plants creating homes and hubs for um for people or um different other beings or animals and uh some people were really good at um, being able to heal um, and some people were really good at creating and inventing. And so there's all different kinds of, of things. Some, some people just loved 
creating games. Uh, some people were really just good with humor and making light of, of the collective and the time, you know, uh, performances and stuff like that. There's all sorts of different um, modalities and stuff that they could go into. Okay, so we're wrapping it up with the images here. Um, and so over in Pleiades, they do have places of uh, where they can just holiday, um, travel in boats, you know, be, be on the material world, walk through, through the forests and over the bridges and um, talk with each other and all that sort of thing. Um, but also there was meeting places as well. So there was domes and... Um, different structures where they could meet and converse and talk and and all of that uh, she's holding uh, not a spirit ball she's she's uh, got a energy ball that she's created within her own hand and um, that can also become a projection of what's in her mind as well so she could hold the energy ball and it kind of come into a white light and then in the energy ball would be the image of that she's trying to show the person so for instance if she wanted to have show the other lady a, a location of how to get somewhere or something like a map or something then she could hold her hand and she just with her own focus and uh, project that onto that ball and then that other person could could follow the map so that's uh, pretty much all of the uh, images that I did for that video and just walking through them with you. I hope uh, you get some information from it. I just, my, most of all, the Palladians wanted to uh, initiate contact and initiate uh, vibrational contact with you so that you could get a memory and um and confirmation that this is all for real, that these beings do exist, that they are going to come to Gaia sooner or later and uh, mingle with everyone again, and that there's certain souls like myself that has been born with uh, more memory of those places uh, so that we can share with others that it's not just something as a fairy tale anymore. So thank you very much for being part of this journey. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And I know that the next portal is probably going to be on the Arcturians because they already started to chat to me and give me some more information about their world um, and some scientific information, which I knew nothing about. So that was really interesting. And um, I hope to see you in the next uh, live reading that I do every Tuesday morning. Uh, I also do short readings for free and I'm an intuitive counsellor. If you want to book me, uh, the links will be down below. I also am an author, illustrator of two children's books and creator of Fortune Dice. And I am a singer songwriter. So there's music on my site too that I have created recently uh, I think there's about three or four songs for light workers so love you guys heaps till next time bye